name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to this video on trying to explain the ventilation requirements for a kitchen when there's a conservatory been built right across the back and you've got a gas cooker installed in there. Now that's subtitle isn't it? But before we get into this video please could you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you exactly when I've just uploaded a video. So, without further ado, let's stop waffling and fluffing and get on with it. Now, the documents we're going to be using to help us along the way with this are the British Standards 5440 Part 2 which is the fluent and ventilation of gas appliances of rated input not exceeding 70 kilowatt net for first, second and third family gases. And that's part two. And then the other document we're going to be using is the building regulations document F. And F is ventilation. And the way I've always remembered this and taught this is F for ventilation. It works, trust me. And GasSafe have also produced a technical bulletin 005 and then there's a little A in brackets. Which uh, explains everything. But on the back there's a great flow chart what we can follow. Whether we've got um, extraction mechanical or natural ventilation. It's an easy chart to follow. So they're the documents we're going to be using. So let's find out what this is all about. Now then, I've already done a couple of videos on the ventilation requirements for flueless appliances. And a cooker is a flueless appliance. So, the British Standards 5440 Part 2 says that the cooker installed in a kitchen, doesn't matter about the kilowatts net of the cooker remember, if the kitchen is between 0 and 5 metres cubed, it needs a hundred centimeters squared of free air. If the room is between five and ten meters cubed, then the cooker requires fifty centimeters squared. But if there's an openable door direct to outside between five meters cubed and ten meters cubed, then the cooker does not require any purpose ventilation. But Building Regulations Document F says that kitchen requires an openable window. Whether the cooker needs ventilation or not, because it needs this window as a purge point. So this window, what it does is, if you're doing some cooking, you've got the smells from the cooking, you've got the steam from your pots and you've got the products of combustion, because remember it's a flueless appliance, we need to get rid of and we need to freshen the air up. So we have to have a window, so when this does happen, we can just open the window and allow fresh air in. And if you've got a door direct to outside, then you can just open the door. Simple as that. But, what about if we go and have a conservatory built right across the back of the house? That gives us a bit of a problem now because even though your kitchen could be over 10 metres cubed and you don't need purpose provided ventilation, we do need this purge window. So let's find out what we can do about that then. Now, first of all, let's have a look at the ventilation, what the building regulations say. Now, the building regulations say the kitchen needs to be ventilated because it's a habitable room and all habitable rooms have to have a window and if they haven't got a window then they need to be ventilated. So in this situation we could use extractor fans. Now if we're using the extractor fan from the cooker and this has to be extracted outside not circulated around the cooker then we will need at least a fan capable of 30 litres a minute. But remember, this does have to extract outside, not circulate around the room. And if we use a fan in the ceiling, then it has to be 60 litres a minute. 
Also, if it's connected to your light switch, if it is the ceiling uh, vent, then it has to have an overrun of 15 minutes. So that's what you could do for a kitchen if you do not have an openable window. Now remember, this is part of the building regulations, not the gas regulations. Now what the building regs also say is if you do have these extractor fans and you haven't got a window in the room or a door, then you have to get air into that room to replenish the air what's going out. So what they say to do is the standard door, so an internal door, is 760 millimetres wide. So the door leading from, say, the living room into the kitchen, where the living room's got a window, it says to cut 10 millimetres off the bottom of the door. So you've got a 10 millimetre gap at the bottom with a 760 mil wide, so that's 7,600 millimetres of free air coming into the room. And they say that should be sufficient to replenish the air as the extractor fan's taking it out. It's going to look a bit weird though, isn't it? Your living room door with a big gap at the bottom. Looks like you're a bad joiner. But that's what the builder regs say. So when you go out to a cooker and it hasn't got ventilation, do we at risk it or not? Well, let's find out what the unsafe situations IGM G11 says about this. So basically, if you look in IGM G11, anything really to do with ventilation is classed as at risk if it's not there. Now, if you go to a kitchen and it's between 5 and 10 metres cubed and it hasn't got any ventilation, it would require 100 centimetres squared, then it's at risk. If you go between uh, 5 and 10 and it needs 50 centimetres squared and it's no ventilation, it's at risk. And if there's no ventilation at all or the room is undersized, then it's at risk. Even if it was a bed sit room, it would be at risk. So, it doesn't mention anything about the window missing because the window is part of the building regulations. So again, depending on the situation, if people were, I don't know, <laughs> would you at risk it? If you, if you went into a kitchen and there was, uh, it was bigger than 10 metres cubed and there was no window direct to outside and there was no extraction, no door, would you at risk it? Well, what if the kitchen door then goes on to a living room and then they've got a window in the living room. Would you just notify it? So it's not very clear in the unsafe situations what we would do in this situation because the window part of it is part of ventilation for the building. Habitable rooms, not for gas appliances. The purpose provided ventilation for flueless appliances is all about your room size. But if you read the flow chart from the back of the technical bulletin 005A in brackets, it says to classify the cooking appliance as not to current standards. Doesn't mention anything about them being at risk. So uh, as long as it's got the correct ventilation for combustion, we can classify the situation as not to current standards. Says it here. So again, it would depend on what you're doing, what you see, what you find, and what the customer has been saying. But remember, if you are at risk an appliance and the customer tells you you're not turning it off, then you're notifying it on your paperwork. Remember, it's only ID situations if the customer doesn't allow you to turn it off is where you get in contact with your ESP and let them deal with it. So it's a bit of a foggy area that. And finally, let's get to the, go into the kitchen. The room's bigger than 10 meters cubed. You've got a nice big uh, cooker in there. We've got an openable window. We've got a door. But then when we look, 
the door and the window open out to a conservatory. So let's see what the old building regs say about that situation then. Now the building regulations say there's another alternative to the actual extraction which we've looked at. So the requirements for the purge ventilation is fulfilled if the door from the kitchen to the conservatory are an extension and the door from the conservatory or the extension is to outside and they are each at least 1 20th of the combined floor area of the kitchen and the conservatory or the extension and there is a background ventilation of at least 8,000 millimetres squared which can be closable or must be closable located at least 1.7 meters above the floor level fitted to the wall between the kitchen and the conservatory or the extension and in the wall of the conservatory extension to outside so that's basically what the building reg says so let's try and put this into something on the board now hopefully my maths isn't going to make me look stupid because you know on my other videos maths is not my strong point along with spelling I think I was put on this planet to play football and to do plumbing and gas not do maths or English anyway <laughs> so hopefully I've not messed it up and if I have messed it up I'm sure you guys will be jumping on the comment section down below to tell me I have messed up so let's see if I can make this easy to understand because it's not easy to understand. So what we've got here you can see from the drawing we've got a kitchen and the kitchen is 3 meters by 3 meters that's the floor area so that gives us 9 meters squared hopefully. Then the conservatory is 2 meters by 3 meters so that gives us 6 meters squared. And what the building regs say we need to do is, we need to add those two floor areas together. So 9 plus 6 is 15. So, it says we need to find 1 20th of that. I think 1 20th is about 5%. Anyway, for the door openings, to see whether opening the door is going to be the right size or not. Because the door openings have to be greater than 1 20th of the floor area. So a standard door is 760 by 1.96 metres. So that comes out at 1489 millimetres squared. Or 1.489 metres squared. So that's what a standard door area comes out at. So if we take the floor area here. To find 1 20th of 15 metres squared, we do 15 divided by 20 is 0.75. Now, because this is 1 20th, then we need to times that by 1. But 1 times 1 is 1, so 1 times something is always the same, isn't it? So it comes out at 0.75 metres squared, or 750 millimetres squared opening. So a standard door is way big enough to cope with that floor area. So a standard door here would work and a standard door there would also work. But most of the time we've got patio doors or French doors, haven't we? But patio doors when they open they're just like one door. Where French doors are like two doors. So a standard patio door or a standard door would be suffice. Now what it also says is we need to provide ventilation going from the kitchen through to outside. So we need a background ventilator of 8000 millimetres squared or 80 centimetres squared and that vent needs to be closable and that vent needs to be more than 1.7 metres off the floor. But remember it needs to be closable. Right, okay. But remember, normal gas vents for a gas appliance can't have fly screens and can't be closable. Whereas this one, it says in the building regs, it should be closable because it's ventilating the room, not the gas appliance. 
What if we had a window here? And a window here? Which when you opened them was more than 80 centimetres squared of there. Is that allowed? Don't even mention that. But if it says it's got to be openable, then surely we could use a window. So let's sum up. When we go out to a customer's property and it's already installed this cooker or a hob or range or whatever and we don't find the uh, ventilation is there for combustion then we're at risk in the situation but if the air is there for combustion but the purge point so the window is covered by the conservatory then 005 in brackets says it's not to current standards but and the big but is if you go to replace that cooker go to replace that range go to replace that hob you have to follow the building regulations so that means you will be doing this you will be making sure we've got these uh, vents the floor area the doors are big enough and we'll be following this or we would be putting the extraction in through the extractor, through the cooker hood or through a ceiling extractor or however we're going to do it. Making sure that we cut the 10 milli gap off the bottom of the door so we've got enough air coming into the room for the extractors. So, I hope that has made it a little bit clearer on, first of all, what 120th is and how to work it out. Have I worked it out right? <laughs> Hopefully I have. Okay, and you can see a standard door will be enough, should be enough, if that's what your combined floor area is. But obviously if you've got a bigger combined floor area, then you need bigger area. So hopefully now that has helped you out with the building regs for a kitchen which does not have an openable window due to the conservatory. So, if you've liked this video, why don't you give me the thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos, which is mainly on Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.